How you doing? Welcome to my YouTube page. Uh, again, I'm Pastor Rick Betes, as you guys are going to get familiar with, I hope. We're going to start doing some Q&As on this page, and this is one of the ones I've been wanting to get into. So I encourage you in the near future to send in questions uh, pertaining to, you know, the Bible and science, uh, political things as well, social things, as long as they're related to the Word of God in some way, shape, or form. I'm going to do my best to answer them for you. So I've begun to embark on this channel and, and hopefully answer the questions and also teach what I would say solid doctrinal principles and, and enlighten people about true Christianity, not religious nonsense, not denominational dogma, but true Christianity. And I would hope to touch both believers and unbelievers in my efforts. And by that I mean believers who are confused in following man-made religious systems and the unbelievers who are actually looking for answers without the false narratives, without the insane rituals and the nonsense that they get out in the world uh, through a lot of the denominations. To do so, you have to look at truth. Truth from a perspective of singular, solid wisdom. Yes, I said singular. Truth is singular. Everybody who follows this new wave of relative truth is sadly misled. And that could be a topic maybe for another Q&A session if you need me to explain that further detail. Um, but the Bible is clear on two different forms of truth and wisdom. There's actually counterfeits that are out in the world system. So our world is filled with what we call so-called truth, knowledge, and wisdom. But have you ever asked yourself, if it, is any of it for real? You know, the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1.21, For since in the wisdom of God the world through its wisdom, did not come to know God. God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. And we know the message isn't foolishness. It just appears to be because most men and women that aren't born again and saved cannot really decipher the word of God. You see, the wisest, most educated men and women in the world don't have all the answers. And most of what they believe at their very core is foolishness in the eyes of God. I know you would argue with me, some folks out there, but that's the truth of the Word of God. We need to be open and honest with ourselves. We, as flawed creatures, don't have all the answers. How often has our science and educational leaders had to admit they got it wrong 20 years ago? That new finding that they found 50 years ago? Uh-oh. I guess they were wrong. They were off. They had a new finding. Every 20 to 50 years, science comes up with something else they realize they have to correct themselves. And I thought about some examples. You know what a funny one is? Think about the pharmaceutical industry and the pharmaceutical commercials. You see them every other year. Now these geniuses who come up with the chemicals in the, in the pharmaceutical industry, I'm not taking anything from them, but they promote a new product that supposedly helps all the ailments, and then several years later, they're on the chopping block by some law firm who is collecting money for the victims of that exact same drug that they created. In other words, they'll say, take Paxeron. It'll help relieve arthritis, and then several years later, the angry lawyer is on the commercial saying, Did you take Pexeron? Call 1-800-HURTLINE. So, you know, we laugh at that kind of stuff, but that's the world we live in. Remember, there was a time when the geniuses of our day and age believed the world was flat. They taught that as a dogmatic statement of truth, that the world was flat at one point in history. So we often forget what the geniuses of the day believe changes as time goes on. Accurate knowledge is the key. Truth being singular is the key. Knowledge at some point will turn into wisdom depending upon your motivation and what you've learned and how you apply it. Now some of you may ask then, how does the Bible or those who teach the Word of God have accurate answers? Well, God ordains certain people and God ordains certain things whether you believe it or not. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 tells us God gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers, be the equipping of the saints for the service to building up the body of Christ. So what we're looking at is God's grand design to help us grow, to get to the facts, to get to the truth. And then Ephesians 4, 14 and 15 goes on to say, as a result, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth, singular, in love, we ought to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ. 
As I get deeper into these Q&A sessions, I'll make it apparently clear how accurate the Bible truly is. I'll try to get into maybe a little bit of biblical history where it came from, proving that the apostles were real men, Jesus Christ really went to a grave and rose from it, and then ascended back to heaven. You are fooling yourself if you think you can see through the lies of the cosmic system around you. So I want to touch on a, a tough question today, but I wanted to start it off with something really interesting that a lot of people get into, especially the, the atheists. I want to touch on evolution today. All right? Us evolving from monkeys or guppies or slime or whatever we evolved from, supposedly. But in doing so, you have to be open-minded enough to realize you can be fooled. And that's what I'm trying to get to. Not just you, but the hordes of people, the masses, can be fooled. Generations can be fooled, in my personal opinion. And really, the personal opinion of the Word of God, as you study it, you'll find out generations have been fooled in more realms than you realize. So I would hope by now, with all the political theater of 2016 into 2017, we see how we're, we are manipulated and lied to by not only our leaders, but the majority of the media. So before I debunk Darwin's theory, which, by the way, has always been and continues to be just that, a theory, I want to read a few verses from James 3.13. James 3.13, Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition, meaning your flesh, in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. In verse 15, which is key, this wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic. In verse 16, for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every evil thing. But the wisdom from above, God's wisdom, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering, without, key word here, hypocrisy. In verse 18, and the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. The Bible is clear that there is a counterfeit to the truth and wisdom that we see out in the world in the cosmic system. God has shown those men of God, of God that, that study the word the real truth when they want to become diligent and seek after him. Notice, though, in James 3.15, this wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, and demonic. And the Greek, the Greek word here, natural, is the, actually the adjective psukikos, meaning having no thought, right, devoid of thought. Derived from emotion or instinct like an animal would act. That's exactly what it means. So when you start thinking about knowledge coming from that, that's sheer emotion. Emotion can't think. Now the word demonic is actually the Greek adjective, diamond diethos, which points to demonic possession. Demonic possession. And it's used to note actually an evil spirit. So it's pretty interesting. That's the wisdom in the world. So whether you believe in fallen angels or Satan or you don't isn't the issue. You can believe that the moon and the stars aren't real, that it's all just a big light show way up in the sky, up in the universe. But guess what? It doesn't stop them from existing. You know, you can deny gravity, but it's still a fact of life. Gravity exists. Step off a five-story building and see. So these are the things we need to look at. The problem is most of us have bought into the lies that there is no kingdom of darkness or that there is an evil force such as fallen angels, but they fit what we call the Hollywood horror movie model, which is nonsense. It is truly a victory for Satan that people are so deceived about what he does, how he controls educational, social, and media elements of the world. Evolution is a great satanic deception that has grown into a full-blown science and historical industry. It's insane. It's bled into our school systems way back when, and it's taken as truth. Darwin's theory remains unproven on many levels, yet it's fully accepted by our educational and intellectual leaders. And it has been, if you think about it, since I was a little kid, and I'm no youngster. So we only need to look at the popular discoveries over the last hundred years, and it becomes glaringly apparent that Darwin's theory can't hold water. But we don't see that on the forefront of the media. First off, Realize the priority to the writings of such men as Darwin 
there was no be, prior to him, prior to Darwin, there was no significant evolutionary finds. Ask yourself that. Why? Why prior to Darwin was there no significant evolutionary finds? Once Darwin became popular and known, the monkey bones came out of the woodwork almost immediately. It makes you think. Almost every scientist, archaeologist, biologist, whatever gist they want to call themselves, any other bone expert who has found pieces of the missing links between man and ape was specifically on a mission to seek and find that proof. Let me say that again. Almost every scientist, archaeologist, biologist, bone expert, whatever you want to call them, who has found pieces of a missing link, supposedly, between a man and ape, has been on that mission to seek that exact proof. In other words, they were looking for that exact thing. They didn't stumble on it. The majority weren't looking for something else. Their only interest was finding the piece of the Darwinian puzzle. And the majority of the bones found were scattered across hundreds of yards. Some of them were a mile or more apart, uh, miles apart on one, one or two cases. Sometimes nowhere near each other at all. Just a little food for thought. I want you to think about that. Most of you folks have heard about the hoax called the Piltdown Man. The 1912 discovery, now remember Darwin came into popularity in the late 1800s. So 1912, the discovery turned out to be an ape jawbone and a human skull fragmented together. Pieces they put together. First guess, the first thing the scientists said in the world was it could be a million years old or older, and it's definitely a missing link in the evolutionary puzzle. There was no question about it. Everybody came forward and jumped on the bandwagon. Now, by 1950s, they discovered it to be a skull fragment of an elderly woman about 600 years old, and the ape jawbone was about maybe 500 years old. But in the time it was discovered, absolutely. Darwin's theory has been proven. The Java Man, another one you might have heard about, found in the early 20th century. It was pieced together from a thigh bone and a skull fragment and three teeth. Okay? And it was proven to be false as well. How about Nebraska Man? They, I think they made a movie about this one. It was found a one-tooth discovery in the 1920s, and everyone climbed on board immediately and built a case for the missing link. Teachers, scholars, scientists, they started to design images, actually, and drawings of how we came. You know the monkey drawing that goes into a man with the, the shadow drawing? That's one of the ones it came from, all right? This thing was actually called the million-dollar tooth, one tooth. It turned out later that it was discovered to be a pig tooth, an extinct pig, but they built a whole case around it this one tooth. But as time went on, they found out it wasn't a human tooth at all. It was a pig tooth. Neanderthal man. That's a big one, right? The skull of the Neanderthal man was first discovered as fully human right off the bat. He had a disease that caused him to have bad posture, a poor spinal growth. It's basically a vitamin D deficiency known as rickets. And also for that matter, the Neanderthal theory is still all over the map after you look at it today. The speculation and research are very muddy and unclear all over the world. Um, there's no serious uh, uh, scientists that believe it's anything but a, a human being. The reality is there was a group of people of a certain race with possibly larger foreheads or jaw, uh, jawbone structure that were different. I mean, nothing to do with whether they were human or not. They were human. It's human DNA. So this was a human being. In fact, we have certain men today with skull structure different than each other. It's not uncommon. Look at boxing, right? One of my sports. Been around it for years. Wrestling or MMA, and, and you know, and take a hard look at some of these guys. The skull structure of some of these warriors in the sports look very cavemanish, right? That's all it is. It was just a group of people that maybe had that type of bone structure, but they were people. They weren't apes. It's never been proven. We are all structured slightly different in the area of size and shape of bone density, bone structure, bone strength. So that's a bunch of nonsense with the Neanderthal man. In fact, I'll be doing a Q&A on where race comes from in a few weeks because a lot of people get interested in that. And it's not that hard to explain when you do the research in the Word of God and also line up the real scientific facts. Truth of the matter is, Darwin himself admitted before his death that it would take the findings of millions of missing links to fully prove his theory. Theory. In fact, the scarce bone fragments that we do find indicate man has been around possibly thousands of years, but no possible way could humans in any way, shape, or form have been around millions of years. Because the fossils and bone discoveries would be plentiful. The missing gap between man and ape has never truly been bridged. 
Never. There has never been a case of one species completely morphing or evolving into another species. A lot of talk about, oh, there was a, I think it was Darwin that looked on the Galapagos Islands and some bird changed his beak structure after being on this island and this lizard adopted and, and changed in this area. Absolutely, they can change over a period of time. There's still a bird. There's still a lizard. So even the latest discovery in South Africa, I don't know if some of you folks are familiar with it, it was from 2015. I believe it's called Homo Naledo, the fossils, which was immediately claimed to be a link between man and ape was put into question shortly after more experts looked into it. But immediately, it was the missing link, which makes you wonder why they always jump to that quickly. One respected anthropologist took issue with the fact that two species might have been discovered at the same site. These fossils add lack of clarity in trying to sort out human evol evolution was the statement that was sent out to the science world by this one respected man. It's a human hybrid was another statement that was noted meaning they were unsure if it was really human all. The fact is, there were all kinds of hybrid, as we would say, right? Animals in ancient times in history. The era of the dinosaur actually shows us a variety of creatures that either went extinct or had evolved into animals that are of the same breed but different size or features. In other words, I got a pit bull and a chihuahua. They look completely different. Guess what? They're both dogs, okay? Their ancestor, the wolf, was a dog, the canine, as we would say, right? So Satan has perpetuated what I would say a falsehood of man evolving from primates. And our scientists, archaeologists, and so-called deep thinkers have dug, planned, and plotted to come up with the links necessary to prove the Darwinian theory. One of the more recent discoveries in 1974, and then the experts are still, a few experts, are still trying to cling on to is called Lucy. And they're doing actually a special on the History Channel on this one, and it's false. The remains of this tiny ape have had to have large portions of plaster of Paris added to the hips and skull because there were so many voids, it was so incomplete, they had to patch it together. By 1983, even one of the most famous anthropologists who stood by it, not the main one, but one of them, admitted that no firm conclusion could be made of the creature. To this day, they cannot confirm exactly what type of species it is. Yet, the textbooks in the early 80s still began to have drawings of Lucy that were made to resemble a half-ape, half-human put in school textbooks throughout our educational systems. Academically dishonest. And even today, people buy into it. Academically dishonest. The hands and feet in the drawings are inaccurate, making it look like a human. It's false. The arms of the real Lucy hang down to her knees may be passed. Her feet had the distinct thumb or big toe off to the side, which indicates a monkey. And her fingers and hands were long, and they were used to walk on like primates. So the whole Lucy theory of walking upright and looking human is a lie. One of the men who discovered the 40-some-odd bones is still trying to sell it as a three-foot ancestor to human beings. And like I said, you'll probably see him on the History Channel telling you all these wonderful things about Lucy, and they do a graphic, computerized, three-foot, um, half-human, half-chimp walking across the screen. Lucy was missing over 180 bones, so they had to creatively piece it together, which, remember, they were specifically looking for the missing link when they made this discovery. So piecing it together, they have to make it look as human as possible, or they got nothing to hang their hats on. This is their whole life's work. So you need to think about these things. The fact is, science and archaeology actually point more to creation than to evolu evolution. But they do not teach that in the school system. Therefore, if you're questioning whether our educational system or our media leaders are, are, are satanic in their nature, they don't even realize it. But there is an element of that within our educational and our media systems. Believe me, Satan is the prince and power of the air for a reason. Something interesting, though, before I close, Genesis 2, 7. Then the Lord God formed man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. It's called Neshemiah in the Hebrew. And man became a living being. The 59 elements of the human body can be found within the earth right under your feet. Just a coincidence. Now, some atheist scientists explain this as the human bodies are mimicking the earth because we've absorbed and become that which is all around us, and we've evolved from the slimy time, uh, slime balls that came out of the water. 
so we somehow or another absorb the uh, the dirt. But it's the Bible's pretty clear on explaining things. So I don't know whether you believe the Big Bang theory, and we can also talk about the uh, young Earth or how old Earth might be, because there's a lot of interesting science on that, and I'll get into that later on. But what bothers me today is there's teachers and popular church movements that actually agree with evolution, agree with the notion that the Bible is only partially true. They buy the lie. They claim to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and do and say the right things, but do not believe wholeheartedly in the scriptures that we have in front of us. So I want you guys to think about these things. Rewind it. Take your notes. Be careful how you research because you're going to find out, as I found out, putting my book together, Discerning Our Time, that finding information on the Internet is very cloudy. There are liberal and there are conservative websites and news and media outlets that want to lean things in each of their directions. So you've got to find the middle ground and find the real truth. I thank you for your time, and like I said, I welcome the questions, Pastor Rick B, uh, Betes at, at gmail.com, and as time goes on, I'm going to post more videos and more teachings. I really want to get into the Q&A stuff, so the next one we'll do will probably be on where race came from, as far as skin color and groups of tribes or whatever you would call it, so we'll get into that at a later date. I hope I've answered a couple of questions for you. Don't believe the lies. The scary thing is, the American textbooks have been portraying us evolving from monkeys for a long time now to the point that generations and generations of young people have their mind polluted and they're adults now and they're polluting their own children's mind so please i ask you move forward in the plan of god and always stay in the truth thank you father we thank you for this message and i ask that this goes out into a lost and dying world father and helps those that need it through your son's precious name our lord and savior jesus christ amen How long was that? Uh, just under 20.